Hello everyone, this is a video on the web interface for the TalkTalk Talk Super Router, uh, otherwise known as the D-Link DSL-3782 A1. So the default IP of the router is 192.168.1.1. The default username is admin and the password is on the sticker on the back of the router. It isn't on the little uh, card that you get that you can move around or whatever that you give to people when they came to your house. The It's only on the back of the router. The first page you get is a status page which tells you quite a lot about the uh, the connection in the system, how long it's been up, and you can click the DSL button and get line statistics. So if you're wanting to work out whether you're getting a good speed for the characteristics of your telephone line, uh, that's uh, a lot of information that's quite often very well buried in some routers. Clicking the buttons or the circular things on the diagram above gives you summaries of what's going on on the network, so what's connected, whether the wireless is enabled, and uh, interesting to see there's a USB device section as well. And looking through the config file that you get, uh, if you go to the backup and restore section, it also looks like you could possibly use a USB mobile dongle as a, a backup internet connection. Um, but definitely the interface shown right on the screen there, you can use it as a file sharing host. So mainly most people want to do with their router is change the wireless settings. So I've gone to settings and then wireless. And unlike some routers, you can actually configure the different uh, 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi with different names. So I think it's the BT Hub won't let you configure it with the custom name. It always has to end in minus five if you're going to have it as a different name, whereas at least the Talk Talk, uh, this Talk Talk router allows you to do a very custom name. It's not stuck to one of their templates. It also lets you set whether it uses TKIP, I think that was, uh, or AES encryption uh, for the WPA2, which again is something that the BT Hub doesn't let you select as a user. You're stuck to uh, whatever their default is. Uh, it also supports RADIUS for authentication. It's very unusual for a home router, so unlikely that anyone, ever, anyone will ever use that, but interesting that it supports it nonetheless. In the settings and then the internet section is where you'd set all of your ADSL, or your VDSL details. Uh, VDSL, which is the fibre to the home uh, stuff, doesn't need any login, but the PVC1 that you see on the screen there is the old, uh, just standard broadband, which does need a logon. So that's where you would set your username and password if the router hadn't picked it up uh, automatically or hadn't been delivered with those settings programmed into it. So going into the uh, settings and then the LAN section, it's where you'd set your uh, router's IP address, DHCP, whether it's on or off. So if you've got your own server in the, in your house or in your business doing DHCP, that's where you'd switch that on or off or configure the IP ranges that it uses. And you can add static DHCP assignments. So if you had a printer, which you always wanted to be on the same IP address, and you didn't want to configure the printer, you could put the printer's MAC address in there and it would always get the same IP address. So this is the USB settings where if you had plugged in a USB hard disk or maybe a memory stick, you can uh, use the TalkTalk Talk router as a, a server basically. So you'd uh, probably be able to go on Windows start, run, and then backslash, backslash, and then the IP address of the router and get to those files. So under the features section, you've got firewall, which has a load of um, what looks like attempts to stop DDoS attacks or de uh, denial of service attacks. Not really sure how effective that will be, but um, you probably leave those as default. I expect and there's no reason to ever switch those off. Under the second option down in the features menu, 
is the applications. I'm not quite sure what this is. It is not port forwarding, but it looks almost like if there is traffic uh, inbound or outbound on the open, uh, sorry, on the trigger port, it will then open up or allow traffic to flow on the other ports. So it's possibly like dynamic port forwarding, maybe. I haven't bothered searching on the internet what this might mean, but uh, this application section, I would be uh, surprised if you have to use it. I think you'd, you'd end up basically just leaving that default. Access controls, ACLs, is where you will allow what is allowed access to your router. So if you wanted to open up the web interface, or in my case, I wanted to enable ping to uh, across the internet to the router, that's the screen you're doing. So going on to the firewall, uh, sorry, the port forwarding section, this is where if you wanted to host a game or if you uh, were running a web server inside your uh, building or your house, you would add the rule there. Also, hidden in the top right of these screens is a is a tab, and I've just switched to the DMZ tab. That's if you wanted to not do specific port forwarding, but you wanted to port forward everything. But going back to the port forwarding screen, literally fill in the name, the internal IP address, the internal ports, and a range if you need to do it or not, and the external port. So you'd put, say, internal IP 192.168.1.200, and uh, for your web server, internal port 80, external port 80, and there you go. Uh, you'd select TCP unless you knew that you needed UDP or you needed both. And that's very easy compared to some routers. So going into the IP filter section, you can deny or allow access to specific IPs on the network bearing in mind that IP addresses are quite easy to set so somebody can go into their settings on their computer or their phone and set an IP address so blocking by IP address is the weaker of the two options that you have here then again at the top right if you select Mac filter it takes you to another screen. This is where you can filter or block or allow specific MAC addresses that are connected to your network. Again, it is possible to change MAC address on your uh, computer or your mobile phone. It's not as easy as changing the IP address, so if you are to use one of these two functions, the MAC address filter is going to be the most likely one that will succeed and uh, that your users wouldn't know how to get around. So going back to the features menu, you then have static routes. I've only ever used a static route in a home user once, and it's when there were two internet connections and I needed to send some traffic down the other connection. Uh, so generally, unless you know what you're doing, ignore that that section exists. TR69, otherwise known as ACS, or Auto Configuration Services. Again, you can ignore. It's basically for talk talk to make changes to your router if you are worried about that kind of thing, you can just switch the CWMP section to off and probably the periodic inform section to, to deactivate it or off. And then it won't report in with TalkTalk. Talk. They won't be able to make changes to your router. The next section I love is a dynamic DNS section because you can see what they support. Dyn DNS costs money. No IP does not cost money and I use it. So I'm glad that they support that. Moving on to self-help. It doesn't say anything about what that does. Uh, it might be intercepting uh, your connection if your connection is down and giving you a page about how to fix it, maybe. I don't know about that, but I would generally switch that off if it was in my house. Going to the management tab, you have time, which is where the router gets its time from. Generally, routers don't need to know the time, but if you're doing logs and this thing support logs, then you would want the time so you can tell. The log section in, by default doesn't seem to log much. Uh, what you saw there, which was only about five lines, was over the space of two or three days. 
So you can see it hadn't really logged a lot. In the settings, you can tell it to log debug, attacks. Uh, you can also even send the logs off to a syslog server, so another machine that might be uh, saving the logs. So it's incredibly feature-rich, this router. It's just hope hopefully stable. Then management, uh, you can do rebooting and factory resetting the device. You can download a config as well if you've got your router set up and it's complicated. The config is just an XML file and it's all plain text, which is really nice to see. Quite often routers obfuscate that file and make it really annoying. Top right of that uh, management section, you've got the admin section where you change your admin password. Under management and firewall, you can upgrade sorry, firmware, you can upgrade the firmware and see the current firmware. The statistics section gives you speeds of throughput, so if you're wondering whether somebody on your network is using all your bandwidth, that's quite a good section. And again, that's really nice to see that it's actually been put in. Then you've got some functions under diagnostics to ping and trace route. The trace route option takes probably about 30 seconds to complete. So in this video, I've chopped out the bit of waiting. And that's the, the ping results there. Change it to trace route. If you do that, it does take ages, so wait. And there you go. So overall, I'm quite impressed with this router um, or all the features in it. Uh, I'll have to see over time that whether it's stable. Um, but it's a D-Link, so it shouldn't be too terrible unless TalkTalk Talk have done something horrendous to the firmware. Thank you for watching the video. Hopefully it's been helpful to you. I mainly make these videos so that anyone that has to support somebody remotely who's using one of these routers can look at this video and say to the person at the end of the phone which section they need to look in, what the screen should look like, what the titles are and everything. So I really hope this has helped you. If it has, it would be super helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing. Uh, YouTube have been very active within the past six months of restricting how uh, how many subscribers you need to have before you can monetize your videos. So making and editing these videos takes a lot of time and it would be super helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my channel. Thank you very much.